Hello everybody, my name is Brady, and I'm here to show you this brand new Mac Studio that just arrived in our, well, studio. I'm super excited to get my hands on this, not only to show you all what it can do, but also because it is the newest Mac line that has come from Apple in some time. And it is shaping up to be a beast. By that, I mean performance. No other reason, just performance. Now the model we have here is the M1 Max chip, but there's also the M1 Ultra model available as well. Today we will be going through a quick unboxing, doing some benchmarking, as well as tearing it down to its bare components so you can all see what's going on inside. Now, let's start this journey together. First, it's clear that Apple took some time to create a great unboxing experience. The packaging itself is well done and alludes to the quality of the studio. What we have inside of the box is the studio itself, the same cool braided power cable we've had for a while, some documentation for your reading pleasure, and an ever cool Apple sticker, which usually tends to disappear after these videos. Hmm. But enough of all the accessories, time for the star of the show. Focusing on the studio, you can see our cool desk, these sweet lights, we even have a big TV. I'm just kidding, I know you mean the Mac Studio. The Mac Studio itself certainly has a premium quality feel to it. It's just solid and well built. Visually, it resembles a Mac Mini with an identical footprint, and you can see it has ports galore for all your connectivity needs. In the front here, we have two USB-C ports, an SD card slot, and a light for the power. On the back, we have four Thunderbolt 4 ports, 10 gig ethernet, the power port, two USB-A ports, HDMI, a three and a half millimeter headphone jack, and a button for the power. You could also see this vent for the cooling. Now this model we have here has the 10 core CPU, 24 core GPU, 32 gigs of RAM, and 512 gigs of SSD storage. But you could get this in up to 64 gigs of RAM, a 32 core GPU, and eight terabytes of storage. Now that we've seen the outside of the Mac Studio, let's take a look to see what Apple has done on the inside. So with the bottom cover off, you can see how nice and compact and dense everything is inside. In the center here, you'll notice the power supply Around the outside here, we have these sections, which are for the antenna on the Wi-Fi. So we got the power supply and the bracket out. As you can see, the, the bottom of the logic board here, we'll get into more later as to what all this is. But this neat little connector here actually connected the power supply to the logic board. I thought that was pretty neat. Quick update here, before we take out the logic board, we gotta go ahead and remove all the ports around the sides, and disconnect the Wi-Fi antennas, a few extra cables on the side as well. Now we're able to actually remove the logic board. One thing I've noticed while disassembling this is there's a lot of very unique and well-engineered pieces. So now that we have this fully disassembled, you can see how big the fan and heatsink assembly is compared to the chassis. On the top side here, you can see we got two fans feeding into the heatsink. We got a Wi-Fi antenna here that runs all the way through to the other side. Now this is where the M1 chip makes contact with the heatsink. The copper portion here in the middle is where the chip portion sits, and then these on either side is for the memory modules. We have yet to remove the thermal paste, but we'll be removing that, cleaning it, and reapplying it before we reassemble. Here we have the logic board set out. First and foremost is the removable SSD card. Normally plugs in right here. There's also an additional SSD card slot here, depending on the configuration you order from the factory that may or may not be utilized. Underneath that, we have the chipset for the front USB-C ports. That will change to Thunderbolt 4 ports, depending on your configuration from Apple. In the center, we have the underside of the M1 Max chip. Next to it, just a couple capacitors and chips. Over here, we have the Thunderbolt ports. You can see chipsets for the Thunderbolt ports there and underneath here. 
This corner here, we have the USB ports as well, the type A ports, as well as chipsets and controllers for those underneath this. Next to it, we have the CMOS battery. Not too much going underneath here. It's actually a solid piece of metal, so we're unable to take a peek underneath that. And now we have the other side of the logic board. Right in the middle here, you can see the M1 Max chip. Since we have the model with 32 gigs of RAM, each of these chips is eight gigabytes in capacity. On either side of the M1 Max chip, we have these two Apple chipsets for power management. Nothing too interesting underneath here, just other chipsets. Right here, we have the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth controller. And over here, we have the 10 gig Ethernet controller. And that's about it for the logic board. So now that we have this fully disassembled, we have all the bare components laid out for you to see. Got a collection of ports, power supply, pieces of the chassis, logic board, the heat sink and fan assembly. All this was in this compact Mac Studio design. It was very well put together and very well engineered. Now that you've seen it all, let's put it back together and see how it performs. Okay, we've got the Mac Studio back together and we ran some benchmarks to see how it performs. First thing we ran was Geekbench, which is a system test that gives us an idea of how the studio performs relative to other computers. We focus on the CPU benchmark, which scored the single core and multi-core performance of the M1 chip in the studio. It achieved a single core score of 1758 and a multi-core score of 12803. And that is right in line with similarly configured M1 Max computers. After that, we ran GFX Bench to test the GPU capabilities of the M1 chip and to get an idea of how well it is able to render and process graphical tasks. We ran the 1080p Manhattan test and got a score of 1,109 frames per second. Finally, we ran a Blackmagic disk speed test so we know how fast the internal SSD is able to write and read data. Built-in storage came back with a score of about 4,800 megabytes per second write and about 5,400 megabytes per second read. Overall, this performed as expected for its configuration and it should easily handle any tasks it was designed for. Those benchmarks were impressive, but here are a few items that can make your Mac Studio even better. Let's start off with the OWC Thunderblade, which was built with studio use in mind. A fanless design, it runs silently while still remaining cool with its innovative heat dissipating chassis. This means your sound sensitive equipment will not be picking up any fan noise during recording sessions. And since it's a four drive NVMe rated device, it's perfect for 4K or greater editing workflows. While the Thunderblade is a storage powerhouse, sometimes you just need something portable to swap data on the go. The Envoy Electron makes studio quality work easy by allowing you to quickly transfer files between devices with its rugged and pocketable design. Being 10 gigabit USB, transferring files between devices is lightning fast. We also have a great product that perfectly complements the Mac Studio. The MiniStack STX is a great companion to the Mac Studio as it has stackability in mind to help preserve the clean classic lines of the Mac Studio while not taking up any additional desk space. The STX meets all of your production needs with massive SATA based storage, blazing fast NVMe storage, and a built-in Thunderbolt 4 hub for even more connectivity. Now these are just a few of the devices to round out your Mac Studio experience. For even more ideas, see our full selection of Mac Studio compatible devices at MacSales.com. And that's it for our first look at the brand new Mac Studio. I personally like the familiar look to it, very Mac Mini-like, the premium quality of it, and the stunning levels of performance it achieved. It'll definitely be suitable for your studio needs. Overall, this is a great addition to Apple's lineup of Macs, and I'm very excited to see how it evolves over the coming years. If you'd like to see more Apple tips and tricks, check out our Rocket Yard blog, or if you'd like to see some of the great products we have for the studio and all other Macs, visit MacSales.com. For OWC, I'm Brady. Have a good day, everyone.